here in beautiful Jamaica. Let me add. Welcome. Welcome to the Center of Life, Center for Spiritual Living here in gorgeous, sunny, lush Jamaica. We've been having some wonderful rain and so everything is green and just saying thank you. Let us begin as we begin all things with an affirmative prayer. Please join me. In this moment we recognize and accept that there is one life. This life is God's. This life is our life now and always. In this life, we move and have being as perfect as that which called us to be perfect. So I know for this morning's service, this already accomplished idea in the one mind that is God unfolds in right and perfect ways. The right words are spoken and the right words are received by every heart that is open and receptive. I know for our speaker this morning, the dynamic, energetic, super speaker, Miss Sandra Cooper, that it will be inspirational and uplifting so that each person who hears these words will feel a connection with spirit that they haven't felt before. This is the truth about this morning's service. And I release these words now into that infinite law that has already made it so. And so it Thank is. You. Our inspirational reading comes to you this morning from a book entitled Everyday Ubuntu, Living Better Together, the African Way. And it's by Mungi Ngumani. Imagine that you are an astronaut. You have finally reached your destination in space and in a quiet moment have a few minutes to peer down to planet Earth. Unsurprisingly, seeing the reality of our fragile sphere hanging like a blue marble in the empty void can be a life-changing experience. The borders of countries, the wars, the conflicts, the environmental challenges all pale into insignificance because we're seeing our planet as a whole. It's unfathomably small and alone. Life is fragile, and so is the planet on which we're living. We forget this when we're caught up in everyday life with the pressure of education, work, family, and the general busyness of our modern existence. It is only in allowing ourselves to take a 360 degree view of any given situation that we are actually able to make just and compassionate decisions and actions. The ability to see the wider perspective is what allows great leaders such as Mandela to come to the table with their enemies and recognize that those against whom they struggle also have a history to share. The ability is also what allowed him to make those subtle shifts necessary to make progress in getting what he wanted and to feel compassion for those on the other side. And that is our reading for this morning. And so it is. I just want to let those words sink in for a little bit. Because at the, at, at the end of the day, it really is about surrender allowing yourself to be present to the good that there is in the world. We're going to stand now and do our praise song, which is in your flyer on page two. You know that...
should learn that sort of thing. It more robustly makes sense. <laughs> and now for the prayer of our center. Please remain standing. That's on a flyer and on the screen. The prayer of our center. The temple of light, center for spiritual living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. Don't sit down yet. <laughs> We're going to do the affirmation of divine love that's found on the bottom of page three, and it should be on your screen as well. Divine love is doing its perfect work here and now. Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for this church now. Divine love is now victorious, and so it is. Now I'm going to light the candle for the blessing of this. Yes, you may sit. <laughs> being joined by our children, lovely, the little ones in the front, some will pass through behind the podium. <laughs> and let us do the blessing of the children, which should be on your screen. We love you. We appreciate you. We salute the Christ in you. And we see you as shining light unto your world. God is blessing you now. And so it is. Thank you. <coughs> now stay, stay up here for the mission. As the children go off to Sunday school, and parents remember that Sunday school is open again, 
Okay, please bring in the children. I'm going to bring you a few brief announcements for today. Practitioner Sunday, October the 23rd, 2022. Do we have any, I'm not seeing anybody, but just in case I'm not seeing you, is there anybody visiting with us in the, in the sanctuary for the first time today? If there is, could you please stand or at least identify yourself, raise your hand, nobody? Well, we're all new. This is the first time we're here today. <laughs> and if you are online and this is your first time visiting online, please so indicate so that we can welcome you to our hearts. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And don't ever forget, we behold the Christ in you. And congratulations are in order. We are delighted at the recognition given to playwright Basil Dawkins in our recent national honors. Basil is a member of our temple. Congratulations, Basil. <laughs> this morning at 10.30 following the service, Reverend John and Reverend Michael will be conducting this morning's discovery. Today, we will be exploring the topic, Managing Change. On Tuesdays at 6, via Facebook and Zoom platforms, Spiritual Mind Healing Service will be held at 6 p.m. And this week, yours truly will be the presenter. The link will be sent out from our mailing list. And my topic is Live It or Leave It. Please join me. <laughs> Please note that Prayer Power will start at 5 p.m. this Thursday to accommodate our Lifeline presentation, which is at 6. The Zoom link will be sent out from our mailing list on Thursday morning. Please join us. There's a new series of classes that's facilitated by Reverend Sonia Davidson and practitioner Steve Golding. And this continue on Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. Title, yes, I'm something not right here. <laughs> I think that should be Tuesday from 7 to 9. <laughs> it's on Thursday? Okay. All right. Well, Thursday, 7 to 9 on Zoom. The class is titled In Tune with the Infinite. And this is conducted by Reverend Sonia Davidson and practitioner Steve Golding. It's titled In Tune with the Infinite. This non-accredited class is based on the book of the same name by Ralph Waldo Prime. Also, Reverend John has a face-to-face -face class titled 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace. And this continues on Thursday morning from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. The class contributions are 1,200 Jamaican dollars or 10 US dollars for registered members and 1,600 or 12, 1,600 Jamaican dollars or 12 US dollars for others. Now, unfortunately, we have had to postpone our 2022 master class, which many of you always attend at the end of October. We always look forward to this because it's a special little upliftment. We've had to postpone it because there's no venue available anywhere on the price of the island. Everything's fully booked. We're disappointed, yes, but it will happen at another date, another time. This is good news for the tourist industry, but not so for us. <laughs> Our October Lifeline, which happens this Thursday at 6 p.m., will feature practitioner Carol Campbell <laughs> as the guest speaker. <laughs> and I got tired to see my face. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's yours truly. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you all online on the Zoom for Lifeline on Thursday. You're going to hear me speak soon. We have started at Temple of Light WhatsApp group. So look out for our invitation to join our TOL Notice Board WhatsApp group. 
this platform will aim to keep you abreast of all that is happening in our temple community. Just a gentle reminder here, membership fees for registered members should be paid in full before December 31st this year. If you haven't already done so, please look about it. It's $6,000 per year. If you work that out per month, per day, even a month, okay? 6000 per year. You should be paid before December 31st if you haven't already done so. Thanking you in advance. We continue to respond to all our re prayer requests with prayer. A practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our Sunday service. Today, the practitioner on duty is Vance Gardner. And the number to call is 876-289-0907. Or if you wish to speak to a minister, please call the same number, 876-289-0907, Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. until 12 midnight. Now you know that uh, it takes cash to care, right? So if you to financially support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page. That's donate.templeoflightcsl.org. And this has all our banking details. Thank you so much for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes our announcements. Now, because this is Practitioner Sunday, we will be doing a series of affirmative prayers. So please join me. I'll begin with an affirmative prayer of health. And each prayer will be followed by singing the chorus. God is health, that health surrounds us. An affirmative prayer of health. Health is the wholeness of being. Health is God in full flight. Health is God expressing fully, freely, in, through, and as each one of us. Our physical being responds to this allness that is God. In this allness, there is no room for otherness. So anything that does not align with perfect health is by the power of this word dissolved and eliminated permanently. There is only God to be revealed as perfect health as perfect joy, as perfect stamina, as perfect vitality. This is the truth about us. This is the truth about our physical bodies, from the crowns of our heads down through to the soles of our feet, every muscle, every tissue, every organ, every function, every issue, is God expressing perfectly. We allow this to be our experience now as we let go and let God be God in, through, and as each one of us right here, right now as perfect health and wholeness. I give thanks that this is now so. And so it is. God is health and health surrounds me prayer of wealth. <clears throat> everywhere that we look, everywhere that we see, all that we see is God. God as abundance. God as overflowing prosperity. God as the wealth of money substance. God as ideas waiting to be expressed. 
God has an abundance of friendship and love and communion and compassion. We are indeed the wealth of God expressed perfectly, abundantly, joyously, generously in, through, and as each one of us. Our experiences reflect this wealth, this wealth of joyous being, this wealth of money substance when we need it, this wealth that looks like opportunities that are bound for us to participate in. This is the wealth that God is. We are God in expression. Therefore, we open ourselves to allow this wealth to pour itself in through and as our experience so that it overflows into our atmosphere, bringing with it everything that is needed for the full, free, complete expression of God. Everyone and everything is blessed in this overflow. There is always enough. There is always and only God. And as the allness of being, there is never any lack because there can be no lack of God. We recognize this now as who we are and how we are. And we can declare with all confidence and assurance, I am wealthy. I am the wealth of God expressed. And I share this wealth generously, openly, effortlessly, and easily so that all, everyone in my atmosphere is blessed. Abundance is the truth of my experience now. I give thanks for this and I release these words into that infinite law, giving thanks that it is already so. And so it is. God is wealth. prayer of light. God is that pure intelligence that knows and knows that it knows. This is the intelligence that guides us on our pathway. This is the intelligence that infuses us with every idea that is good for expression, with every idea that leads to greater expression of our God selves. This is the idea that lights the way for ourselves and for other selves who share this pathway with us. God is light. That light surrounds us. That light allows us to know. And in the knowing, we can surrender and accept the intelligence that is ours. This light now fills our minds, this fills our hearts, and it fills our experience so that we never make a foot wrong. Every decision is perfectly guided by this light. Every expression is filled with the wisdom that is inherent because we are the way God works. So we open ourselves now, we open our minds to allow God as intelligence to pour itself into our minds so that it flows out into our experience to touch, 
to heal and to bless and to bring all others into that perfect understanding that right where we are, all of God is always present and fully active. God is indeed the light on our pathway. We allow this to be so now as we say thank you, God, for light. And so it is. God is light that light surrounds me. prayer of love. Love is that eternal flame that continually burns on the altar of our hearts, burning away any doubt, any fear, any idea that there is anything other than God as love expressing. God is fully and always in our hearts. Everyone whom we touch is that expression of God finding its otherness in our hearts. Because in fact, there is no otherness. There is only one. There's one of us here as God expresses itself in myriad ways through each person through each interaction, through each conversation, through each touch, through each smile, through each embrace, there is God. We know that God works and loves and lives in us as us. So fearlessly, we allow this love to pour out from us to embrace each person that we meet in compassionate understanding, to be that smile that lifts each person that we interact with into a new place of being, of knowing, of recognizing that God is. And because we know that God is and God is love, there is only love to be expressed. We allow that love now to be revealed through us so that every person, every circumstance, every situation is surrounded and supported by love. And therefore, all is perfectly well. I give thanks for this knowing now and I release these words into that infinite law of love and know that it is already so. And so it is. God is love that love surrounds me in that love I safely dwell tis above beneath within me love is mine deep breath in and sink into those affirm affirmative prayers because this is who we are. Ah, exhale. <laughs> and now let us sing our first hymn, No Man is an Island. Please stand.
And that second verse was adapted by practitioner Sandra Cooper, who is our speaker this morning. And Sandra has just been demonstrating the creativity that is God. She has been demonstrating the allness of being as she chooses to live the principles that we espouse through the science of mind. Please help me welcome practitioner Sandra Cooper. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, everyone. It is my joy to welcome each and every one of you here this morning, especially those of you who are joining us wherever in the world and on our Facebook Live or on YouTube. You know, our founding minister, Dr. Elma Lumsden, often said that the principles of truth are simple but not easy. Consider this. How many times have you had this experience? You, you, have a, you come to church on a Sunday morning and there's a powerful message. Or you read a great philosophical book about life and truth. And it leaves you with a wow feeling. And in the moment, we find ourselves to be more aware, more at ease, less reactive, perhaps more conscious, more patient, and less irritable. You've had that experience? Yeah, man, feel good, don't. We learn the steps of affirmative prayer, and it all seems so simple. But then life happens. The light begins to fade. The old patterns, the old habits begin to reemerge, and we return to the same old, same old. Why isn't there the lasting and significant difference that we crave? I think it's because the world of conditions on this planet that we call home is often hard to navigate. And it takes a real shift in consciousness for us to survive. What says thrive? So I've titled my message this morning, Evolution in Consciousness. Simple as A, B, C. If we ask the question why is there not real and lasting change in our experience, what would the answer be? Consider that no matter how powerful the message is or how great the aha moment that comes when we read an insightful book, just knowing alone makes no difference. Until our mindset changes, our thoughts and decisions, our attitudes and our actions will not change significantly or lastingly. Mindset essentially means the beliefs that we have assimilated and to which we are now subconsciously attached. They, sh they shape our perceptions and condition how we see life and how we interpret what happens around us. Until we consciously do something about our programmed belief system, nothing much is going to change in our lives. That doesn't sound so encouraging, does it? Many of us have been coming here for many, many years, and this might be hard to hear. The something that we must do is the inner work, which is a deliberate and ongoing reflective practice that increases awareness of who we are and our relationship with the divine. For, for many of us, that inner work might feel like a struggle. It's tiring, it's time consuming, and it's daunting. This is partly because our original beliefs are so much a part of our identity. It is really hard for some of us to let them go. And, and the letting go is not conscious, you know, or rather the holding on. We don't say to ourselves, I'm going to hold on to resentment. It is not a conscious thing. It's, it is so embedded in our subconscious mind that it is a part of who we are. So those behaviors uh, continue to sustain and nurture the same old, same old reactions 
to people and situations and events. We see demonstrations of these old patterns right here at the temple. When I think about how some of us act and react, myself included, to what others say and do, decisions we make, like for example, when we offer the Sunday school building for lease, it's hard to imagine that we're all devout ministers and practitioners of the science of mind. And I, I include all of us as practitioners of this teaching. The fact is that we often respond at the level of the, the relative. That is, we respond to what we see, hear, and experience, and it's usually our ego judgment that is at the forefront of our consciousness. When the master teacher Jesus declared, when he was um, on, the, on the cross in his crucifixion experience, he said, Father, when he referred to the, um, I think it was to the, 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 the people who had persecuted him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I believe he was saying in essence that we need to be patient with each other and with ourselves as we are often acting from a space of unconscious awareness of who we truly are. We know not what we do. That knowing is where we are not deliberately practicing our truth. The unconscious pro, um, conditioning is that place from which we are acting. Our spiritual work must therefore be from that place of the absolute. This does not change, even though we are going through our stuff. We cannot fix an issue at the same level of consciousness that created it. We are individualized expressions of spirit, co-creating co through the same creative process every single day. The challenge is to always hold steadfast to this truth, to see it, to be it, and believe it in the midst of changing conditions and in the darkest night of circumstances. Now, everywhere we go, in every relationship, in every situation, we find opportunities to practice our principles. Consider, how do you react when you receive an unfavorable diagnosis? What happens when there is a financial challenge? How do you navigate the, the, the plethora of emotions when there is the ending of a relationship? You know, two nights ago, who shared two interesting stories of how so-called negative experiences turned into a blessing for him. Firstly, the first story he told, um, he shared was, he was traveling with a group of friends and they got separated. I think he went to the bathroom and when he came back, they were all gone. One of the friends had his cell phone. So not to worry, he made his way to the terminal only to realize that it was the wrong terminal. So he had to turn around and run like crazy. And you know airports like Miami Airport, everywhere far. And so he ran about a half a mile to make his flight, which thankfully he did. Now when he got home at the end of that journey, by the following day he felt a very sharp pain in his chest and a shortness of breath, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. The tests that they did discovered that he had had an embolism in one of his lungs. And running through the airport, listen to this, running through the airport the way he did, according to him, now, Reverend Sonia, you can't tell me if this is true or not, but that running dilated the arteries that allowed him to stay alive, it saved his life. The second story he says, well, this is a man who seems to have had a couple of health challenges. Some years later, while he and his family were moving house, you know those big old, time, what we call old time now, big box television sets? Old time, can you imagine? Lord have mercy. He moved one of those big 24-inch um, television sets. 
and he felt a sharp pain in his back. For days he couldn't walk, so his wife took him to the doctor, kicking and screaming. A subsequent MRI revealed, yes, that the lifting had caused a herniated disc, but there was more. The MRI revealed that he had a tumor on his kidney, one which caused him no symptoms, but which would have killed him if it had been left undetected and untreated. So hurting his back made him do the MRI, and the MRI discovered the condition that he could now deal with effectively. But what struck me about this man and his story was his optimism, a sense of peacefulness with which he described his life-threatening experience. And he said that the treatment that he is doing for the, for the tumor on the kidney is, um, is a tr treatment that, is, that goes via his immune system. It's not chemo, it's not radiation. But he takes his treatment every two days. And the treatment gives him three days of, you know, real downtime, discomfort. And he says, but you know, I have 11 days where I'm to on top of the world. Now, how is that for optimism and a positive attitude? And so this is, this is a, a man, to my mind, who, in spite of the challenges he had had health-wise, there was an evolved consciousness there. So the idea of evolution of consciousness, we, we can see it is grounded in our Declaration of Principles, which states that we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We must grow, guys. We can't help it. That's who we are. Babies don't stay babies forever. And we go through a process of, of physical evolution as we grow. We can't help it. It's just how it is. And so think of the growth as an upward spiral. And as the spiral moves upward, it gets bigger and, and wider. Okay? Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith of the Agape International Center speaks about this evolution in consciousness in his four stages of spiritual development. He says, and I, I, well, I want you to think about as you listen to the four stages, where do you think you are along this continuum? Stage one is a sense of life happening to me. I am a victim. I think of God outside myself, making things happen in my life. And God is always testing me, rewarding me, or punishing me. This is the God for me of my childhood. And I used to hide under the bed because I thought that God couldn't find me under there. When I, you know, behave bad, I would run under the bed because he can't see under the bed. But I, I, I knew I grew up battling blame and shame and guilt and a sense of powerlessness. Stage two, life is happening by me. This is where we are evolving from that sense of victimhood and we learn that God is within me and that there is a law, you know, think about yourself, that I can use to effect changes and I can claim dominion over my life. And I use this law effectively and I feel powerful. I use visualization, affirmations, and effective treatment for specifics. And I can declare I am in control of my thoughts and my life. Stage three, life is happening through me. Here I've learned to establish dominion over my life, more so than in stage two. I surrender to spirit. No, the surrender thing is not, they say that, that one is simple, but that one is not so easy. Because many of us are control persons. I, I was going to use it, the, the freak word, you know what? Many of us love to be in charge, to be in control, to know that it must just go so. We, this is how we set the thing. Okay? And so with stage three, there is more, there is a sense of surrender. 
surrender to the indwelling presence, knowing that it operates through me. I become its instrument. And so the quote that says, it is not I, but the Father within that doeth the work. And this is where we use the practice of visioning, where we invite the guidance of spirit. And it, it is a really, really powerful practice. Give, give the, 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 the office a call and invite one of the ministers to take you through a visioning exercise for your own life. That would be really awesome. And it's, it's, it's a really awesome practice at this stage of our evolution. Stage four is mastery. Life is happening as me. Might be a subtle difference with stage three, but it is where I release the last vestiges of separation and I realize complete identification with God. I know that I am it. We can declare definitively, I am God. Jesus was in this stage when he said, when they see me, they see he that sent me. And I and my father are one. In this space, we are now transparencies for the Christ. And we have moved from knowing the truth to being the truth. And we can declare, I am one with spirit. I am spirit. Let's say that together. I am one with spirit. I am spirit. I, I don't hear a, a thing. Just a little mumble over this side. Let's say it together again. I am one with spirit. I am spirit. It must be noted that, the, you know, this is not a linear process. Stage one, stage two. It doesn't work that way. It's fluid. And they are ongoing. And so we, and we also move back and forth through them. And they represent the spiritual work that we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So the actions that we take and the choices that we make in our day-to-day -day lives also contribute not to, um, or not to our evolution in consciousness. Everything we do, every experience that we have contributes to our evolution in consciousness. For example, if we are mired in regret, you know, I shoulda, woulda, coulda about the past, lamenting the mistakes that we made, feeling that we have wasted our productive years, we are likely to, to be left feeling bitter. On the other hand, those of us who use crisis as an opportunity to make adjustments in our lives will enjoy greater fulfillment. And speaking of actions, volunteering is a powerful action. And I invite you to make that a, a choice of yours, to volunteer at the temple. There are so many wonderful activities that are taking place. And so just give us a call and... Um, and ask, how can you serve? Can really make a difference. Another thing that we can do to, to, to facilitate our evolution, learn a new skill, a, le a new language, learn to play the piano, learn to sing. Okay? Um, think about that idea that you wanted to put into you know, create a business out of, get it going. And that will make a big difference to, to, the, to the, the sense of, of your growth and evolution. Um, remember that I said that evolution in consciousness is as easy as ABC. Well, I'm going to share the ABC formula that I've been using, which has really, really helped me to navigate life's potholes. The first is A, and it's awareness. Interestingly, self-awareness is the first level of the emotional intelligence practice. So we need to be very powerfully aware of what we are thinking, what we are feeling, what memories are flooding into our minds. What are we focusing on? What, where are we putting our energy? What are the feelings? Uh, you, you, you know, you ask somebody, so how are you feeling? Okay. How was that for you? Good. We need to know what our feelings are and give them a name. Are we happy, sad, jealous, uncomfortable, 
you know, what is the name of the feeling? When we understand the name of the feeling, we can, we c we can uh, allow ourselves to move through it, over it, away from it much more easily than when we're just limited to good and bad. We're also, in the awareness, we are present to the 